Hi folks, this particular lecture is going to be a multi-part series on how you can integrate Ansible with GCP. So I hope you guys have fun and I hope you guys learn. So let's proceed. So what is Ansible? So Ansible is a tool that has three major functionalities. The first functionality is to provision resources. So if you are looking at it from a GCP point of view, it would be akin to provisioning things like your compute engine or your cloud function or even your cloud storage. Anything that is provisioned in GCP can be provisioned by Ansible. The second most important functionality is application deployment. So this would be like you've deployed your, or should I say you have provisioned your instances in GCP. Now we want to run some applications on top of that. So Ansible lets you do that as well. And the third primary functionality of Ansible is CI CD. So that is akin to what Cloud Build does for you. So that functionality can also be done by Ansible. So let's look at how the architecture of Ansible looks like. So Ansible is deployed in a machine called as the control machine. So this has to be a Linux machine. Currently Ansible does not support Windows. Okay, so now that you have created your control machine with Ansible installed on it, the next thing that you need to create is the playbook. So the playbook is a YAML based configuration file that has a list of instructions that can be executed by the control machine. It is of the format host and task. So what that means is that it will tell Ansible in the control machine that on this particular host, I have to perform this particular task. So let's provision some resources. So when you're provisioning your resources for the first time, the host would be the local host and the task would be all the tasks that you need to execute or create your resources like your compute engine or your cloud function or any other resources in GCP. So this particular playbook is read by the control machine. And based on the playbooks configuration, it can create instances. So it can create your compute engine or it can even create your cloud function. So that is how you can use your playbook to provision resources. You have to always note that when you're provisioning resources, the host would always be the local host on which you're running the control machine. Okay, so now that you have your resources provisioned, let's deploy some application. So to do that, the first thing you need is an inventory. So the inventory consists of all the resources on which you want to deploy your application. So your inventory would be created after you provisioned your resources. So your inventory would currently consist of two hosts, the instance one and instance two. Okay, so now that we have our inventory, let's create the application deployment. For that, we need to create another playbook. And in this particular playbook, the host would represent instance one and instance two. And the task could be that, okay, I need to install a web server on instance one and instance two. When that particular playbook is read by the control machine, an SSH is triggered to both those instances. And those set of instructions are sent directly to those particular instances. So the instance one will deploy the web server and the application. And once the deployment is done, the task which enabled it to install those instances disappears or it is removed. The same is done for instance two as well. So that's a set of tasks is sent to instance two. So instance two deploys those particular instructions like creating the web server and uploading the application. And once that is done, those particular tasks or instructions are removed. So that's it for the theory. Now let's deploy Ansible in our cloud shell and all the dependencies that are required. Now let's install Ansible. Now to do that, we'll be using our cloud shell and cloud shell will be the control plane on which our Ansible will run. So you can go to the Ansible page, the installation page, and it will give you this particular command to install Ansible. So you can just copy this and paste it there. Since I already have Ansible installed in my cloud shell, it will just tell you that, okay, everything is already installed. So after you've installed Ansible, the next thing you do is you install certain GCP based dependencies. So GCP provides certain modules that enable you to create resources in GCP. So you can go to the GCP page in Ansible and you can download all the dependencies. So the dependencies that you need are, you need the request and the Google auth installed as well. So you can just copy this and you can paste it. 
So everything is already installed for me. So those are the two things you need. You need to first install Ansible and then you need to install all the Google based dependencies. That is the request and the Google auth. So the first thing we'll create is we'll create a cloud function because I feel that's the easiest thing to do in GCP. So let's start by creating a service account. A service account contains all the credentials that you need to create resources in GCP. So I'll create a service account. I'll call it my Ansible service account. Click on create. And I will select the role of compute function admin. Sorry, cloud function admin. And I'll click on continue. Click on done. And what I'll do next is I'll create a I'll download the key for this particular. So I've opened this. Click on permissions. Sorry, click on keys and you can click on add key and you can create a new key which you can download in your machine. So once I have this key, I'll upload this to my cloud shell. So to do that, you can click on upload file and you can upload the file. So I've already previously uploaded a file. So I'll be using this particular service account key. Otherwise you could just upload whatever file you've just upload, uh, created. So I'll just cancel this. Okay. So now that you've got your service account, the next thing you do is you go to the appropriate Ansible page, which lets you create a cloud function. So I'll do a Google search again. I'll do Ansible and I'll do cloud function. And it'll open the documentation that is required to create a cloud function. So you can go through this page and you can go through the example. So this is the example on how you need to create a cloud function. So you can copy this and you can create a playbook out of this. So let's do that. So I copied the code snippet and I pasted it in my notepad. So this is how my final playbook would look like. So it, so as discussed before in the presentation, the two important parameters are the host and the task that that particular host will perform. So the host would be the local host because we are running it on the cloud shell itself. The gather facts is something that I'll discuss later. The next is the task. So the task here represents that you would be creating a cloud function. And this is the module or the task that Google provides for you. And these are all the parameters that you need to fill in. So the name represents the name of the cloud function, the location as to where that particular cloud function will reside. The entry point is the hello get. And the source archive URL is the pointer to that particular code. So let's look at the code. So the code is basically just an index.js and a package.json. So let's open that index.js. So the index.js has a function called hello world. So this particular name should match with the entry point. So you can't have the entry point as hello get. So I need to change this to hello world. So I'll just copy this and I'll paste it here. And the source URL again is basically a code that I have copied and I have uploaded it to my cloud storage. So I just copy this path and I'll paste it here. So you have to always make sure that the entry point always matches with your function name in the code base. So the next is the trigger HTTP, which is true. The project name is something I need to change as well. So I'll copy this project name and I'll paste it here. And the service account is basically the pointer to the service account file that I've just created. So I've, so I've changed the service account file as well. So it points to the JSON file that we just created with the service account credentials. So that's about it. I'll just copy this particular YAML file and I'll paste it. So let's create a new folder for this. I'll do a VI create 
and I'll paste the contents. Now the other thing to remember is that your service account here is trying to access a S3 bucket. So you have to give permissions to your service account to create uh, or to access your cloud storage. So I've given cloud object admin. You don't need to give this. You can just give a cloud uh, storage reader or viewer. That should be fine. The other role that I need to give to my service account is called as is called the service account user. Now the reason for that is if you go to your troubleshooting cloud function, you'll see that if you are not using your default service account, then you have to give this particular role to your service account. So I'll give a link to this particular URL in the description below. Just go through this and understand why I gave this particular service account this particular role. So I've given my service account three roles. One is the cloud function admin, the service account user and the storage object admin. So just remember that when you're creating this on your own, I'll cancel this. So let's go back to our cloud shell. And to deploy your playbook, the command that you need to run is ansible playbook and the name of your file which is create So what it says is that the runtime field is missing in your particular. So this is something that's not updated in this particular example. So let's add that as well. So I'll go back to my create. So my runtime is node.js 12. So let's save this and let's just run this again. Okay, it has been created. So to check whether it's been created, you can go back to your, uh, so it should create a cloud function by this particular name, test object. So let's see if that has been created. So let's go to our cloud function. So you can see that a cloud function by this name has been created. So let's just open this. Open the source. So you can you can see that it's pointing to the same source. Click on index. It's hello world and back. So this is a small lesson on how you can create your cloud function. So this is going to be a uh, continuing series and I hope to make more lectures on Ansible and GCP. So I hope you guys had fun and please do not forget to subscribe. Thank you.